The sand has memories, memories of our past, when gods walked this world and our heroes stood among them. But the gods' vanity grew, and in their struggle, we were cast away. Existence is the endless competition between life and death, creation and destruction, being and non-being. There are a few games where death doesn't play a central role and where we aren't compelled to become a living weapon. Whether it's the colorful world of something as comparatively benign as Super Mario Bros. or the sorrow-soaked depths of Dark Souls, many games are simply different iterations of this grand contest and a means for us to come to terms with our universal inevitable fates. The thing is, none of us have crazy tech, magic, or superpowers at our disposal. In many ways, games let us live out our fantasies of being heroes, or villains, and get a chance to taste that greatness all of us so deeply desire. And let's be real, is there anything more epic than clashing with colossal enemies and imagining ourselves to be something more than human, someone or something that is actually capable of making a positive change and bringing some semblance of peace to the world? What wouldn't those of us who truly care give for such a reality to come into being? I honestly think that if there's anything that unites us as gamers, it's the will to overcome challenges and, in many cases, seemingly impossible odds. In the world of RPGs, combat is everything, and to be more specific, mastery of combat. It's not all about knowing how to swing a sword or cast a spell. You also have to be aware of incoming attacks and take the appropriate action to avoid them. But really, over the many years that games have existed, it really seems like there's nothing new to be seen in terms of fighting mechanics. But that's where Atlas Fallen, an upcoming fantasy ARPG from Deck 13 and Focus Entertainment, hopes to mix things up and bring some entirely new elements to the table. The game promises spectacular superpowered combat, which definitely sounds amazing, but obviously we have to ask if this is just some kind of clever marketing ploy to get people to buy the game or a genuine statement of fact. And isn't it possible that this is just code for mindless button mashing with extra steps? Well, that's exactly what we're here to find out, friends. In Atlas Fallen, the world you inhabit is one that was very nearly annihilated by Thelos, the god of the sun. For this reason, most of the world has been reduced to dust and ruins, so it would appear that the vast majority of the environment, or possibly all of it, is a massive desert that stretches far beyond the horizon. It also looks like Thelos has enslaved some or most of the last remaining humans known as the Unnamed to collect and deliver a magical substance known only as Essence to him. As a result, your main goal in the game is to defeat Thelos, as well as a number of other gods, and liberate humanity from their cruel oppression. You take on the role of an unnamed protagonist who is one of the millions of humans living under the yoke of Thelos and the other gods. Things change for you upon discovering a gauntlet that harnesses essence and allows you to perform all kinds of incredible feats. First and foremost, it gives you the ability to levitate slightly above the sands and glide above them for swift, seamless traversal. This is definitely a huge relief because the idea of trudging over miles and miles of desert by foot sounds utterly soul-destroying, and I guess this also means you won't have to worry about using mounts. Of course you can still walk around as normal if you want to carefully survey an area, but if you need to make a quick getaway or begin your journey towards a distant location, your gauntlet will take care of it. As you may have guessed, the gauntlet also has the ability to not only let you float above the sand, but manifest various weapons that you can use to vanquish your monstrous foes known as wraiths. This is because the gauntlet grants you the ability to manipulate sand and densely pack it together in order to form the different implements of destruction you'll get to wield. As such, there are three different options to choose from, namely the dune cleaver, sand whip, and knuckle dust. The dune cleaver forms gigantic blades and hammers so you can slice and smash your foes to pieces. It's especially good if you like a no-nonsense aggressive approach to combat. The sand whip is more of a long-range weapon that allows you to keep your distance and take out monsters from afar. This is best if you prefer to play more defensively and rely on magic and heals to prevail in battles. Finally, the Knuckle Dust allows you to deal damage via a series of quick fist strikes and is apparently best used when facing a single enemy such as a boss or special enemy type. Each weapon represents a different playstyle, and you can have two available at any given time, meaning you can switch between weapon types during combat and piece together some devastating combos. You'll also notice that as you engage with enemies and land strikes during combat, your weapons will evolve, becoming larger and more lethal in the process. Each weapon has two ascensions, with each new level giving you the ability to obliterate your enemies far more easily. This is a really nice mechanic that makes you feel extremely powerful and adds a whole new dynamic to combat encounters as you are encouraged to nail hits and avoid taking damage so you can really lay into enemies and take them out more efficiently. You'll also notice that a lot of the combat in Atlas Fallen is airborne, so you'll spend a lot of time leaping upwards, hovering in place as you dish out and chain together attacks, nimbly dodging incoming attacks as you do so. This element makes Atlas Fallen feel really intense and kinetic and, much like the weapon ascension thing, gives you the very real impression that you are an unstoppable agent of destruction. But of course this is all just the beginning with regards to the game's combat. What you're really going to want to be able to harness and make use of in Atlas Fallen is the momentum gauge. 
Admittedly, gauges and power meters are not new or innovative by any means, but there are some aspects of Atlas Fallen's gauge system that you'll hopefully find refreshing. With each successfully executed attack, your momentum will build, giving you the ability to unleash special attacks that will often play a pivotal role in particularly difficult combat situations. The more momentum you have, the more devastating your attacks become. But there is one caveat you need to keep in mind here. The more momentum you acquire, the more damage you will take if an enemy manages to strike you. In this sense, you'll need to choose when to execute your special moves and assess the way the battle is going at all times if you want to avoid being smashed into pulp. Risk and reward mechanics are everywhere in games, but in Atlas Fallen, if you're able to be patient and more importantly careful, you can dish out some extremely brutal attacks that will annihilate many enemies almost instantly. Seeing that Atlas Fallen is an RPG, it comes complete with all the upgrades and customization options you could hope for and more. If you really want to fine-tune your chosen playstyle, then you'll be pleased to learn that there are over 150 different essence stones that you'll be able to collect and use throughout the course of the game. Each stone modifies or augments a given trait such as your damage, tricks, momentum, survivability, or healing. If you're not sure which stats an essence stone applies to, simply look at the corresponding color. It's red for damage, purple for tricks, blue for momentum, green for healing, and yellow for survivability. You'll notice that different essence stones correspond with one of the three tiers of your momentum gauge. In other words, because of their effects, certain stones in their corresponding abilities can only be unlocked once your momentum gauge reaches a given level. There are both passive and active essence stones, so you can really customize the kinds of buffs you prefer to use in combat. You should also be able to unlock more slots under a given tier so you can equip additional essence stones to help you during combat. Again, there are over 150 stones to choose from, and each one can change the entire combat loop. As is usually the case, you'll need to experiment with different combinations of essence stones and find out which ones work best for you. As a bonus, if you really like a particular essence stone combination, you can save up to three different essence stone builds and switch between them when you're not actively engaged in combat. This is a really nice touch which will allow you to create even more powerful builds and approach different scenarios using the appropriate loadout. It's pretty incredible just how much time and thought has gone into crafting Atlas Fallen's combat, and besides the fact that the environments and enemies in the game look absolutely amazing, there are so many dynamics and custom playstyles you can develop and play with here. It's always great when devs hone in on gameplay and use the mechanics as a central selling point, and with Atlas Fallen in mind, this does indeed seem to be the case. I also like the fact that the environments are relatively monotone owing to the preponderance of sand, but in stark contrast, attacks and spells are brightly colored and luminescent. This enhances the overall effect as the environment itself, as well as the enemies, almost serve as a backdrop upon which you can unleash a veritable swirling light show of moves. For larger wraiths, you can also target certain body parts which will allow you to incapacitate them and kill them more easily. They'll also drop resources that you'll then be able to collect and use to further increase your skills and abilities. On top of all this, you can play Atlas Fallen in two-player co-op mode and work together to fight Thelos and the other gods. What's also cool here is that certain essence stones are designed with cooperative play in mind, so you can have completely different builds for when you team up with another player. And if your partner leaves or simply can't make it, you should still be able to continue with your playthrough unimpeded. Be aware though that if you play with someone else, the game will ramp up the ferocity of wraiths and also make smaller enemies spawn in higher numbers or more often. In this way, your experience scales in relation to the number of players in the campaign, which is undeniably a good thing. Overall, Atlas Fallen looks like a real breath of fresh air in the world of gaming and something that I think will enthrall fans all over the world. There are some really clever mechanics here that set Atlas Fallen apart from similar games, and in this respect, the game looks like it may just be a major hit with ARPG fans. Atlas Fallen is out on August 10th, 2023 and will be available on PlayStation, Xbox and PC. So that's all I have to say for now. What are your thoughts on Atlas Fallen? Do you like the combat mechanics or do you think it's all too much and a bit gimmicky? Let me know in the comments. Be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily gaming, VR and tech content. From me and the crew here at Metasquad, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Later!